I am delighted to be here with you all at the India South Africa Business Forum. We are deeply honored to have with us Your Excellency, Mr. President. It is a matter of great privilege that you will be the guest of honor at our 70th Republic Day. <laughs> What if I told you the future of the global electric vehicle revolution might not be decided in Silicon Valley, Beijing, or even New Delhi, but deep in the mines of South Africa? And what if India quietly and strategically is moving to secure a resource that could tip the balance of power in the EV race? Today we uncover India's shocking move into South Africa's lithium scene, and why the world isn't paying enough attention. Lithium, often called white gold it has become the single most critical resource of the 21st century. Without it, there are no batteries, no electric vehicles, no renewable storage systems. Whoever controls lithium controls the future of clean energy. Global demand is exploding. By 2030, the world will need up to four times more lithium than is currently produced. And yet, just a handful of countries dominate this supply Australia, Chile, and China. Africa, however, is quickly emerging as the next frontier, with massive untapped reserves in Zimbabwe, Namibia, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and South Africa. The continent is being courted by every major power. Now let's look at India. With a population of 1.4 billion and one of the fastest growing EV markets in the world, India faces a problem. It produces almost no lithium of its own. Instead, it imports over 70% of its lithium I don't sells from one country, China. For a rising power that seeks to reduce dependence on its rival, this is a strategic nightmare. Visual, cargo ships, Indian EV charging stations, Chinese battery factories. The Modi government has set ambitious targets, 30% of all new car sales to be electric by 2030. But without a stable lithium supply, this dream collapses. Which is why India has begun looking abroad not just to Latin America, but also to Africa and South Africa, with its rich mineral base and growing EV ambitions, has suddenly become a crucial partner. South Africa is the continent's most industrialized economy. Known for its platinum and gold, it is now positioning itself to join. The global EV race, in 2025, Pretoria unveiled a billion rand incentive around 54 million US dollars to kickstart local battery and EV manufacturing. The goal is clear. Instead of just exporting raw materials, South Africa wants to build an entire value chain at home. But here lies the dilemma. Building an EV industry requires massive lithium inputs. And while South Africa has potential lithium reserves, it cannot yet supply its entire domestic demand. This opens the door for strategic partners partners like India. Enter NMED, India's largest state-owned mining company. In 2025, it quietly opened an office in Dubai not for oil, but to monitor and acquire critical mineral assets across Africa. Lithium is at the top of its list. Reports suggest NMED and other Indian firms are already in talks with African governments, including South Africa, about direct partnerships and mining stakes. Unlike Western companies that often approach Africa with strings attached, India is playing the South-South cooperation card. The pitch is simple. Both India and South Africa are part of BRICS, both want to challenge Western dominance, and both want to reduce China's grip on global minerals. A lithium alliance, therefore, is not just business, it's geopolitics. Here's where the story gets even more interesting. China already controls over 60% of the global lithium processing industry. The West, particularly the United States and Europe, is scrambling to catch up. But imagine if India and South Africa, two key members of BRICS combined forces, it could reshape the supply chain and give BRICS a powerful foothold in the clean energy race. For India, the deal secures independence from Chinese imports. For South Africa, it brings in investment, technology, and a guaranteed buyer for its resources. But for the West, it's a potential nightmare. An Indo-South African lithium corridor could tilt the balance of EV power away from Washington and Brussels and toward the global South. Of course, moves like this never go unnoticed. Washington is watching closely. The United States, under its Inflation Reduction Act, is pouring billions into securing critical minerals. But Africa has often been seen as America's blind spot. For decades, us investments in Africa lagged behind China, 
and now India is slipping in too. If South Africa begins supplying lithium directly to India, it reduces the leverage of Western automakers who rely on open global markets. Europe too has a stake. The European Union has already signed mineral partnerships with Namibia and the Dar Sea, hoping to guarantee clean energy supply chains. But so far, South Africa has remained. Cautious balancing ties with Europe, China, and now India. An Indian partnership could disrupt Europe's plan to dominate Africa's EV market. And then there is Japan. Tokyo has been aggressively pushing into Africa with its TICAD Summit strategy, offering billions in development funds. Japan's automakers Toyota, Nissan, Honda are deeply invested in EV development. If India secures South Africa's lithium, it could put Japan at a disadvantage in a continent it has been carefully courting. But this story is not just about great powers. It's about Africa, too. South Africa's lithium potential is part of a much larger continental race. In Zimbabwe, Chinese companies have already secured control over some of the largest hard rock lithium deposits on Earth. Namibia has granted exploration licenses to both European and Chinese investors, and the Dark Sea long known for cobalt is now expanding its lithium prospects. For Africa, the question is whether it can finally capture more value from its minerals. For too long, raw materials have been shipped abroad, processed elsewhere, and sold back. At a premium, South Africa's government has been clear. It wants not just to dig lithium, but to refine it, build batteries, and eventually export TVs. India, with its growing manufacturing capacity and technology transfer potential, fits neatly into that vision. But nothing is ever that simple. Mining lithium comes with its own risks. Environmental degradation, water shortages, and community displacement are already sparking protests across Latin America's lithium triangle. South Africa, with its history of labor unrest in the mining sector, could face similar challenges if the Indian partnership is seen as exploitative, it may trigger backlash. Then there is the political risk. South Africa is navigating an unstable economic climate with unemployment soaring and power outages crippling industries. Any major foreign investment will depend on stable governance and long-term trust. For India, this means walking a delicate line, investing heavily, but avoiding the appearance of neocolonial exploitation. So why does this deal matter so much to India? The answer lies in strategy. India is betting on what analysts call mineral diplomacy. Instead of competing head-to-head -head with China in Latin America, India is building alliances in places where it has historical and political goodwill. With South Africa, the BRICS connection is key. Both nations have stood shoulder to shoulder in calling for a multipolar world. Both are wary of Western dominance, and both see China as a partner but also as a rival. By locking in lithium supplies from South Africa, India is not just buying raw materials it is securing a seat at. The table in the global clean energy race, it allows New Delhi to strengthen its CV industry, reduce its dependence on Beijing, and at the same time, elevate Africa as a critical player in the global value chain. But make no mistake, China is watching. With decades of experience and billions invested in African mines, Beijing is not going to let India quietly walk in. Already, Chinese companies are lobbying for bigger stakes in South African mining firms. Beijing may also use its influence in BRICS to keep South Africa closer to its orbit. If India wants to succeed, it must outmaneuver the single most powerful actor in the global battery supply chain. This sets up a quiet rivalry within BRICS itself, China with its entrenched mining empire, and India with its rising ambitions. For South Africa, it is a unique opportunity to play both sides, maximize leverage, and emerge as a true gateway to Africa's clean energy future. Yet South Africa is not alone in this race. Just across its borders, Zimbabwe has already become the crown jewel of Africa's lithium, with Chinese firms like Ji Huayu and Cinnamine dominating. Extraction. Namibia, meanwhile, is aligning itself with Europe and the Democratic Republic of Congo, rich in cobalt, is expanding into lithium to diversify its exports. In this regional competition, South Africa risks falling behind if it does not act fast, which is why a partnership with India could be a game-changer bringing in investment while allowing Pretoria to assert itself as Africa SEV hub. Let's step back and look at the bigger picture. By 2035, the world's demand for EVs will more than triple automakers in the US, 
Europe, Japan, China, and India are all scrambling. For supply, without lithium, the transition to clean energy stalls. South Africa, with the right partnerships, could become one of the most important players in that race. For India, securing lithium from South Africa is more than just a deal its survival. Without it, India risks falling behind not only China, but also Europe and the United States. So why aren't you hearing more about this? Because much of it is happening quietly, behind closed doors, through diplomatic backchannels and corporate negotiations. Unlike flashy defense deals or headline-grabbing summits, lithium agreements are complex, slow, and deliberately kept under the radar. But when the dust settles, they could shape the balance of power in the 21st century more than any weapons deal or trade pact. Here's the truth. The world is entering a new resource war. But this time, it's not about oil, it's about lithium. India, once seen as an underdog in the EV revolution, is making bold moves to secure its future. And South Africa, standing at the crossroads of history, has the chance to transform itself from a raw material exporter into a global energy powerhouse. Together, they could reshape not just the EV market, but the geopolitical order of the 21st century.